Hello, everybody. <laughs> Why is it every time we decide to take a Sunday off? Well, it's because these guys are doing their homework. <laughs> the XJWs and activists are beating the bushes, getting this information to us. Yes. So I want to thank TJ very much for sending me this. Two conventions for Rochester, New York, scheduled for August, have been canceled. <laughs> Last Sunday, July 11th, a letter was read stating the two August 2019 conventions in Rochester, New York are being canceled due to circumstances beyond Watchtower's control. Congregations are being assigned to go to assemblies in Pennsylvania with the same dates. This is a real shock because Rochester has had mostly two and sometimes three assemblies for many, many years. <laughs> Well, only took us about 30 seconds before we found a news article uh, relating to this. So we're going to read this. And for me at least, it's pretty obvious why Watchtower lost um, the use of this facility. And it really comes down to money. And I find it interesting that, you know, when it comes to being a Jehovah's Witness, you're given the list of recommended lodging, um, yeah, the recommended lodging list for your summer conventions months in advance, say like, like in February, January, January, February. January, February. So all these hotels get booked up, and at the last minute, now these hotels ain't making money. I'm, I'm wondering if the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to get their deposits back. And I'm also wondering here in Pennsylvania if there's going to be enough hotels available to accommodate the um, 9,000 9, plus that are going to be <laughs> driving. <laughs> well, even if you split that, that's 4,500, you know, per weekend. Yes. And I mean, what an inconvenience because it's a lot further away, you know, yeah. from Rochester. Yeah, you know, I so think I guess it was 200 and something miles. Something like that. It was like a three hour and 40 minute drive, something like that. Yeah. Now I'm going to put the link down below to this article. This is from WXXINews.org. Rochester loses Jehovah's Witnesses Convention over failed negotiations. Okay, now I just got to say, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around, you know, like what Mike was saying, you know, when we used to get the lodging list. We were always told years ago that Watchtower negotiates rentals of arenas and hotels and stuff. Yep. At least a couple of years couple in of advance. Years in advance, exactly. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm speechless. So I'll just read the article. Well, you know, and basically what this comes down to is Watchtowers put the cart before the horse. At the very least. So it just shows what a bunch of morons these guys truly are. For the first time in over 30 years, Rochester will not be hosting a regional convention for thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses this summer. According to the religious organization, there was an 11th hour breakdown in negotiations with Pegula Sports and Entertainment, the management company for the Blue Cross Arena. My understanding is it had to do with the cost of renting the arena and they just couldn't come to terms, said Don Jeffries, president and CEO of Visit Rochester. I just have to laugh right here because something can, comes to mind. We all remember the video we did when the, you know, when the JW um, person was in front of the camera saying how Jehovah made sand come out of a storm so they had enough sand to build a kingdom hall on this you know way obscure island now now think think about that friends jehovah can make sand come out of a windstorm out of a you know storm at sea to build a kingdom hall and jehovah can harden the heart of pharaoh but yet jehovah can't soften this man's heart so that they can come to terms because I mean you know come on hey guys guys after all isn't this life-saving information I mean think about what all of this is entailing right now Jehovah 
can't soften the hearts of the men that own the arena so that, you know, Jehovah can get their life-saving message out. What a crock of shit this all becomes. I know. Well, especially when it says 11th hour breakdown in negotiations. Why are they waiting till like three weeks before the convention to still be negotiating? There's something in this article that leads me to believe it has to do with money and financing. Well, look at the deals they used to get on arenas in the past. I know, but there's something in this article that I, that you haven't really heard before regarding these conventions. Okay. Jeffries isn't happy about the loss of the convention, which was scheduled over two weekends in August. It's very disappointing, Jeffries said. There are two huge groups for the city of Rochester in August. It's close to 5,500 hotel room nights we're going to lose, plus all the extras, meaning restaurants and all of that. You know, and, and think about where Rochester, New York is. I mean, it, it's right in Watchtower's backyard, and they don't have any negotiating power any, anymore. No. <laughs> I'm just going to laugh. Now, before I forget, I wanted to mention, now, I did go to JW.org, and I did type in, um, you can do, like, click on About Us, and then right in the middle of the drop-down box, it has, like, meetings and conventions, and you can click on conventions, and then just type in the city or, you know, the closest area, and the conventions will come up. Well, when you do that, the only convention that came up was for Toronto for this coming weekend in Canada. Yeah, and so it makes me wonder, you know, we all recognize that from Rochester to the um, place in Pennsylvania, you have the same convention dates, but how many of those now might have to take a little extra time off from work, change their schedules around perhaps, um, and then those that are probably can say, you know what, I ain't going to drive this distance, um, I'm just going to go to Canada, but they don't have that as an option because how many Jehovah's Witnesses have to take more time off from work and or rearrange their vacation time now? Or you know? what if they don't get their deposits back? Yeah. You know, that's over a hundred dollars, yes. you know, right there that is taken away, they're going to lose. But, but that doesn't matter. You know why? Because Watchtower still gets their rewards points from those, yeah, from from those deposits if they put them on their credit cards. Yeah. So back to the article. Convention attendees had already booked rooms at eight or nine area hotels, and the hotels now will have a hard time filling those rooms in less than a month. He said. Don Hines, director of communications for Pegulus Sports and Entertainment, said in a written statement. Safely hosting an event of this size requires several operational hard costs including security personnel, emergency medical technicians, traffic police detail, and janitorial services. No revenue from these services is retained by Rochester Arena. The Jehovah's Witnesses have been offered the lowest possible cost to fulfill these needs and hold a safe and enjoyable event. So when Watchtower reads to the congregation a letter that says that it was beyond Watchtower's control and that there was a breakdown in the 11th hour of negotiations, when you put all this together, it boils down to they were given the lowest possible cost and Watchtower says, no, you know, we can't afford that. Well, think about... You know, this, for those that have been Jehovah's Witnesses for many decades, like Kim and I, we remember going to conventions where Watchtower um, had their own safety personnel, where they had their emergency medical uh, tech technicians. Uh, they handled all the, you know, traffic control. And the big one, janitorial services. See, we would go in and clean the convention site prior to the convention starting, and then we would make sure that they were clean when we got finished. It appears now this particular arena wants to hire those 
services out. And Watchtower is probably saying, oh, no, no, we ain't going to do this now. Well, maybe because of insurance liability. I there, just thought yeah. of maybe their insurance liability for the building now, they have to make sure everything is handled properly and can't let Watchtower have control over, right. you know, those services. That makes sense. Yeah. But to say they've been offered the lowest possible cost, you know, what? Why wasn't this negotiated? <laughs> <laughs> look, look, see, the, the problem is, is that, you know, on day one, at, you know, that mid-morning break when the brother comes up and says, Brothers, we have a deficit. How much would this have added to that deficit? And those Jehovah's Witnesses would probably be crapping themselves saying, We can't afford this no more. Yeah. Back to the article. Jeffrey says Visit Rochester tried to move the event to the Riverside Convention Center, but it was already booked. Most conventions are held there, he noted, because it's more flexible venue that caters lunches and dinners. But the arena is the only site large enough to accommodate the 9,000 Jehovah's Witnesses who were scheduled to be in Rochester from August 9th to 11th and August 16th through the 18th. So that's only 4,500 Jehovah's Witnesses per convention. per convention. That's not much. And there again, now that begs the question, if they're being assigned to Pennsylvania, where's the extra 4,500? Well, I shouldn't say 4,500 rooms because, you know, you've got families and things like that. But did Watchtower negotiate the you know the better room rates at the 11th hour or did the hotel say uh-uh those those are some very um questions that need to be answered because if these jehovah's witnesses are not going to get a deal on the room rates um maybe they won't go to this convention in pennsylvania because they're getting you know taken for a ride because they can't get well, room rates at a, at a discounted rate. Well, it mentioned earlier, you know, they've lost 5,500 room nights in, yeah. you know, Rochester. So that means they need 5,500 room nights in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, now. exactly. So are they going to be able to negotiate cheaper rates, like Mike said? Or are they just going to be like, sorry, you're on your own? You know, there can't be that many rooms that Watchtower has negotiate, negotiated. All right, back to the article. Jeffries was not part of the negotiations between the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Pegula manage, management team. They have told us they will look at each group that comes to Rochester and they will put a price tag on it, and that's kind of cut and dried, he said. Jehovah's Witnesses from 90 congregations across western New York are still considering Rochester as a site for its 2020 conventions. I'll, I'll almost bet that doesn't happen. Right now is about the time they will be trying to finalize those arrangements, said Scott Miller, a spokesperson for the religious organization. So he's basically saying, see, we would be no gate negotiating right now for 2020 conventions. So what happened with this year's then? Yep. I mean, even if new management took over, don't you have a signed contract? <laughs> it makes you wonder, doesn't it? <sighs> Okay, uh, but with this relocation, that's become the prime focus. Once we get past these two conventions that will be held in the alternate location, then their efforts will be quite earnest in seeing what can be worked out. Jeffrey said he is proposing alternate ideas for next year, even if it would mean spreading the convention over three weekends to allow for enough space at the convention center. As far for... As for their relationship with the new managers of the Blue Cross Arena, the Jehovah's, the Jehovah's, yeah, said well, you in would a written the statement, the Jehovah's Witnesses, but it says the Jehovah's. Yeah, the recent change in management changed the dynamic of our partnership. Not if you had a contract. This was to be expected, but relationships take time to develop and mature. And since our conventions are just weeks away, time was not on our side. That's why it was vital for us to secure another venue for our congregants. The Jehovah's Witnesses are now making plans to attend this summer's gathering, which was just moved to Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. So again, <coughs> I get to ask, why didn't Jehovah soften the heart of these, uh, you know, men? on the management side of the arena. I mean, you know, you, 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 you read in your Bibles how Jehovah hardened the heart of Pharaoh. He didn't soften this man's heart. Come on, guys. Come on, Jehovah's Witnesses. 
start piecing all of this together. You're being taken for a ride. Well, like I said, if they had a signed contract, you know, when the new management took over, they would have to, you know, on the, you would think honor, they'd have to the, honor contract, the contract. You they? would think. Or at that time when they took over, that's when you should have had the negotiations then. Yeah. Not wait until three weeks before the convention. Well, look, 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 no, look. It, it just comes down to this, okay? <laughs> My favorite little clown, Let, said it the best. We have more going out than we have coming in. They don't have the money to put up some of these arenas anymore, to rent these spaces, especially if some of these guys are, are starting to smarten up as to who and what Jehovah's Witnesses are. I mean, come on. All we need to do, guys, is start sending all of these property listings to the people that own these arenas and show what a wealth of money Watchtower's raking in right now for selling all their New York properties, all these kingdom halls around the world. These guys that have these arenas need to be made aware of just how much money right now Watchtower's raking in. And then to be able to sit down and negotiate the lowest price possible, these guys are probably thinking, no, you're a religious entity. I mean, come on. All you need to do is send in a little bit of seed money and you get what you want. God's going to bless your seed money. These guys, this day and age, that own these arenas know what these religions are up to because it's all over the Internet right now. It's yeah. not just Watchtower. So the Watchtower spokesperson, you know, he says, we'll see, you know, what can be done. And the efforts will be quite earnest in seeing what can be worked out. Translation is, well, we'll see, you know, if they come whining and crying to us and how cheap they can give us this convention, you know, when all the restaurants aren't getting as much. Well, you that's, know. that's, that's the whole thing, dear, because... Restaurants are going to lose money, so hotels hotels will lose money. Um, so all, all of those business owners are going to be whining and crying to the city council, well, you better do something for next year because we're losing money hand over fist because, you know, you didn't negotiate a good price with these Jehovah's. Well, look at the ice cream vendors there in Tucson. <laughs> yeah. I mean, them alone yeah. would have been, you know, yeah. protesting the city if, you know, they lost the convention. Yes, exactly. Which I heard they lost it this year. Mm -hmm. The International Convention was in Phoenix. Oh, and along those lines, I talked to somebody. Um, Prescott, Arizona hosted the delegates, and they rented the rodeo arena. They did, like, a rodeo. They had, like, a show. They hired someone to do a shooting show. You know, like a shoot, you know, kind a sh of... A western shootout? A, west, a western shooting, you wow. know, entertainment. They took them here, took them there. You know, they took them up to the Grand Canyon. I mean, took them all over. The congregation had to pay for this. Wow. You know what we ought to do? We ought to do a, a video about this and name it Rodeoing for Jehovah. <laughs> well, they've already done the cowboy dancing inside yeah, the kingdom hall. I know. If you go to our like main homepage in the search box, put um, oh what was it, cowboy footloose in the kingdom hall. Yeah. That was from the 2014 convention, and they were dressed as cowboys, and they were doing a dance to the song Footloose right in the kingdom hall. So th they actually staged a cowboy shootout. You mean like a you know walking down the middle of the street going ching, ching. I don't ching, know. Draw. I mean. You're, you're talking about a group of people that are supposed to be peace-loving. What the hell are they doing staging a gunfight where somebody's getting murdered? Well, I didn't say a gunfight, just a shooting but, show. You know, like <sighs> we seen when we took the train there in Williams. You know, they did kind of like a gambler caught cheating at cards. and Yeah, there was a big shootout. Yeah, there was a big shootout. Somebody mockingly died. I don't know. Jeez. I guess we're going to have to investigate that even further, huh? Because that yeah. would be interesting because, you know, you've got a group of people that are supposed to be peace-loving, you know, peace -loving, and yet here they are being entertained by, you know, a Western shootout? It doesn't make sense anymore. Well, I guess they wanted to give them the Old West experience. 
I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about like me trying to wrap my head around why they're waiting till three weeks to be negotiating. To still when negotiating. When everybody's already had their, you know, and and rooms pay, you know, the deposit on their rooms and, you know, all arrangements made. And, and I'm still negotiating why Jehovah didn't have watchtowers back on this. I mean, why didn't he soften the heart of this, you know, people, the management of this arena? I mean, this, this or, throws a monkey wrench in the whole thing because I thought, you know, the convention was the huge summer picnic for Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, I got it. What? I figured it out. This is why they have removed spirit-directed organization <laughs> from the baptism yeah. question there because it's no longer spirit-directed by go. Jehovah. He doesn't have their back and Watchtower now recognizes it. <laughs> there you go. Because if you had Jehovah's spirit direction and Holy Spirit, you would be able, he would provide arenas. If he could exactly. provide sand, you know, from Kingdom Halls and, you well, know, hell. all this other stuff, then he can provide arenas. Well, he can also split the Red Sea also. I mean, come on, Jehovah's Witnesses, start, start analyzing this stuff. When your organization tells you that Almighty God is backing you and this is his earthly organization, his modern-day or or organization, something is seriously wrong with that theology this late in date. I mean, it, there's something wrong. He can split the Red Sea. Um, he can turn a staff into a snake. Um, he could, you know, make all of these plagues. He, he, he can make a fog come over all the land of Egypt so all the firstborn die, but yet he can't soften this man's heart so that you can have your summer convention without any inconvenience. Give me a break. Or suddenly give them more money. Yeah. Here's an idea. Have all the governing body sell their Cadillacs, their Rolexes, their designer wardrobe, uh, their mansions. All the money for the booze they buy. Yeah, have them take all that money and put it towards getting conventions. You know, that's what you want the rank and file to do. So Exactly. Or take some of that money from all of these kingdom halls you're selling and give these people what they want so they can so that you know your your the rank and file can feed at Jehovah's summer picnic yes so thank you for watching and uh, keep them coming guys I've gotten a lot of emails <laughs> this morning and we're glad you like the nail and coffin yeah I'm already yeah. getting property listings and kingdom halls that are you know, the congregation's closed and going up for sale. So, this is going to be a busy but exciting summer. Yes. So, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time around. Bye. Bye.